If you're into 3D printing, you've probably got quite the collection of filaments. Some end of roll spools with not quite enough material to print what you want, or even some of these sample filaments that ship with your machine. And I'd be lying if I said I haven't thrown out the last couple of meters on a spool just to make room on my filament shelf for a new roll. In today's video, we'll take a look at Sunlu's new filament welder that promises seamless welds of filament, meaning you can take those scrap pieces of filament and transform them into a useful roll for functional printing, all for the low price of 35 US dollars. This video is brought to you by PCBWay. More on that later. This is not a new idea. There's tons of these cheap filament welders on Amazon, but my results from these welders were extremely underwhelming and getting consistent welds is almost impossible. Filament that's been sitting on your shelf may become brittle over time as it's subjected to heat and humidity fluctuations and even UV light. To combat this, I'm gonna recondition all the pieces I'd like to fuse in this four roll drying box that Sunlu sent over. Filament dryers are kind of a fad in my opinion, but at the very least they make decent spool holders. And with the four filament bays in this one, it could possibly work for the AMS light system from Bamboo Labs. But at 160 US dollars for this one, it's a bit of a hard sell, especially with this bogus user interface. I don't know who lays these menus out, but this one and most of the other filament dryers I've used make little to no sense. Why is it letting me select the Sunlu logo? I've designed desiccant holders that fit into this dryer in hopes that I can wick out any moisture a little faster. But honestly, it was more to get rid of the 50 or so desiccant packs I've held onto over the past couple of years. After that, we can turn our attention to this little filament welder. The filament joiner itself is small and build quality here seems really good. They seem to be using some sort of heat resistant plastic for the body. There's a clear cover that flips up to expose the heating chamber. And a button releases the spring loaded cover on the small metal heating unit itself. There's also a switch in here that starts a timer when the heating chamber is closed. The unit takes a barrel connector on the back that plugs into a USB port. There's no power supply included in the box, but any USB charger rated for two amps should work. After plugging in the unit and hitting the power button, it'll start to warm up immediately. The play button on the bottom right hand corner cycles through your adjustable options which will be material and target temperature. The up and down buttons on the left side will make adjustments to the aforementioned settings. They advertise that this unit can heat up to 240C, but I'd only do that in a well ventilated area as these PTFE tubes will off gas some pretty nasty chemicals. Of course, we want to keep our newly welded filament tangle free, so for this, I printed a re-spooler so we can put it directly onto a fresh roll. Okay, let's splice some filament together. This video is brought to you by PCBWay. With industry-leading rapid prototyping solutions, PCBWay can have a part headed to your doorstep within days. Whether you're looking for circuit boards, machined parts, or even 3D prints in stainless steel, PCBWay has everything you need to make your next project a successful one. Their website makes it super simple to order parts. Just drag your PCB designs or 3D model into your browser and choose every detail you need to make sure it meets and exceeds your expectations. Head over to the link in the description to learn more and help support the people who support this channel. The instructions that I received with this machine were literally unclear. So I'm just going to try it until I get a good splice. They recommend cutting your filament ends at a 45 degree angle to increase the surface area for welding. After the machine warms up, it'll give you a few beeps and you can slide a PTFE tube over the ends of your filament. 
These little tubes are consumable unfortunately and will lose some of their dimensional accuracy over time, but it does ship with quite a few in the box and I'm sure you can get replacements for a reasonable price. Place the connection into the splice core, applying slight pressure inwards on the filament, holding it tight for the suggested 8 seconds. The machine will beep after the 8 seconds are up and you can remove the filament and let it cool. Then you can either slide off the PTFE tube or place your filament in this trough up here. Close the shield and it'll cut the PTFE tube off with an embedded razor. Seems simple enough, so let's fuse a bunch more filament. My first few attempts didn't go so well, there's a bit of finesse needed to get a clean weld. Too much pressure and the filament will bulge out around the heating chamber. Too little and the filament won't fully weld. I found that pushing the filament in only from one side gave me the best welds. Also, when removing the filament from the heating element, it's important to keep constant pressure as the weld is still molten and the two ends can separate. I put on a podcast and spent a couple hours fusing a bunch of filament together and I was left with this roll. Now let's print something with it. This seemed to be going well until I noticed a filament run out error. The filament had broken at one of my welds, so I reloaded the filament back into the extruder and resumed the print. I checked again, and the filament had broken between the filament runout sensor and the extruder, causing the machine to continue running. Fusing a bunch of filament like this is a real gamble, as you'll have to have quite a bit of faith in your welds. But when it comes to attaching an end of roll filament to a fresh roll, it works as advertised. I think at the price of 35 bucks, this thing works well enough to earn a spot in most 3D printing enthusiast workshops. It works well after you get the hang of it, and saving all those scraps from the garbage is something I'm definitely in favor of. Let me know in the comments if this is something you'd use. As always, thanks for watching, and happy printing.